roll call, please. Mr. Henderson. Here. Mr. Patricelli. I saw him on Zoom. He's here on Zoom. He's uh, he's here. Mr. Gallarducci, he's on Zoom. Here. Mr. Colosimo. Here. Mr. Verducci. Here. Mrs. Schneider. Here. Mr. Shashowski. Here. Mayor Copeland. Here. Solicitor McDermott. Here. Engineer Brett. Here. I'm Joe Power. Chief King. Here. Chief Castain. He's on Zoom. And Director Miller. Here. Okay, welcome. Um, Start with the visitors' log. We have Bob Fryer. Yes. Uh, me. My name is Bob Fryer. I uh, used to be head of the planning commission here. I lived my life in Bridgeville. I've been living in South Bay for the past uh, 12 months. Uh, the reason I would like to bring some things to your attention. That, uh, that will hopefully influence you making the right decisions about the various important issues concerning Brazil. <clears throat> this is a picture of the newly built uh, McLaughlin Kirk, uh, Kirk uh, Debris uh, Petra. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. And uh, the lower photographs are, are from the University of Pittsburgh's. Uh, study that they did about the cause of the uh, flooding problem and how to solve it. I just want to emphasize again that the cubic feet of water per second, the power that will flow into the Barger Road Bridge is 3,250. The culvert on the commercial, commercial street, uh, there's the two arches, it will only flow 1860, 1,860 cubic feet of water per second. And it's even less than that, I think it's around 1,500. <clears throat> but I just wanted you to see that. <clears throat> and uh, I'll talk about the Barter Road Bridge in a bit. Uh, the only thing I wanted to show you is this shows the uh, Barter Road itself from Guadalupe Creek, Baldwin Street. This shows Bus Street. And primarily, the reason the pavement on that 500 to 600 section of Barrera Road uh, has had to be paid more frequently. It hasn't been the creek seeping under the road. It's been the 70,000 square feet of backyards <coughs> of, from the uh, four or five homes above that uh, area of, me, of the road who have been seeping over the road. This is a picture of the sloping of the backyards of those four or five homes. And I think one of them might be uh, yours, by the way. And uh, also, I think there was a period of time, I'm not sure when, 30, 40 years ago, the county ordered all the people in that row of homes to disconnect their roof down spots because it, I, it, I guess it was over flooding the sewer system we were it was previously run into. But I just want you to uh, be aware of those facts because it will influence some of the decisions we want to thing. <coughs> Yeah, this is a little bit more about the, uh, the debris picture. Uh, I <clears throat> went up and took a look at it the other day, and I waded through the creek and took measurements. And I was, I was going to say, Ken, did your did your engineering firm design this? We finished it. Okay. Green was engineering store. No, that's okay. That, what, what, I, what I found out and sort of surprised me is. <clears throat> If you're standing upstream from the collector, the distance between the one vertical column and that wall is six feet. And then on the other side, the distance between the opposing vertical column and the hillside is nine feet. So that's, those are what I think are excessive. It's too much space for more debris to go through. I think you guys ought to take a look at that if you can to see if you should maybe put in another column because uh, the, uh, this, this relates to the Barrera Road Bridge again. <clears throat> the, uh, the, for years, uh, we have all assumed 
with the Barbara Bridge is causing the flooding because that's what the debris is collecting. But even when the debris was there, the water was still flowing under the bridge, generally with uh, four to six inches of space. And once again, it was the culvert and the commercial street that's been causing the problem. Right? And what I wanted to show you was, uh, I, I know, uh, I think Mike sent a letter to Elgin County asking them to replace the bridge, and I don't know if that will take five to ten years, but what I'm suggesting is <clears throat> I think that you should temporarily forget about replacing the bridge and ask the county that's used the money that they saved from having built the bridge and build a wall between the creek and Baldwin Street. I noticed you're taking an attempt to do that now, which I think that you're on the right road. But I think that you need uh, some more help. And the other thing I want to mention to you, in doing that, uh, you want an opportunity of building a ramp roughly right next to the bridge, down to Baldwin Street, to divert 50% uh, of the Bower Hill Road's 18,000 cars a day through that Baldwin Street business district, which would definitely renovate it rather quickly. And this is a drawing that, matter of fact, Lennon Smith did this drawing. Uh, <clears throat> assuming that uh, the Bower Hill Road from the, from the cement company to the Wapman Road intersection would be abandoned. And, and uh, this shows the, uh, the, the good judgment of running this traffic from Bower Hill Road down through the Baldwin Street area. And I can't think of. Oh, yeah, one other thing. I'll, I'll, I won't be any longer. <clears throat> Yeah, while you're fetching that, Bob, uh, rest assured that every water event we have in this town, we learn from. Uh, oh, it was. And uh, we are making improvements as we learn from. I was, uh, uh, trust me, I've mentioned it before. Since uh, our new manager and our new engineer have been here, things have changed dramatically in a very favorable manner. But I just want to show you a couple more things. <clears throat> this is something you, you all know. This is all of the roads that lead to Bridgeville, because Bridgeville was here 150 years before any of the other communities in the South Hills. I don't know, in this area, the South Hills. Uh, or St. Clair, Collier, and South Fayette you know, were great places to hunt deer. But Bridgeville was an established community, that's why all of this network of roads leads to us. <clears throat> but in the center, you have a four lane road coming in from Collier four-lane road from South Head, there's the two-way bottleneck is the problem. And I, I think that uh, there are different proposals uh, uh, that have been made about that. Not, not, not by me, but by <coughs> competent, five or six competent engineers that are building a two-way couple. <coughs> about, about two or three weeks ago, I talked to a good, excuse me, a good friend of mine about what he thought of the two-way couple, and he wasn't so sure about it. And he referred me to the Coriopolis uh, two one-way street system. And I went down there and took a look at it, but I just want to show you why this is not what the original system is. Uh, the, the, Corio, uh, the Corio system is a, a, a half a mile or more of two one-way streets. The one street, the, both streets are three lanes wide. This westbound one is parallel to major industrial huge factories. Primarily a lot of truck traffic. Sometimes the, the speed there goes up between 35 and 45 miles an hour. And coming back, the average speed in the three lane road is around 35. But a, a very one important thing, one of many important things, the distance between the court office roads is 150 yards. The distance between the proposed Washington Avenue and Shady Avenue, two way couple, is half that distance. It's very very uh, pedestrian, convenient pedestrian. So I just wanted you to see that stuff in my purpose. Oh. Thanks, Paul. Yes, John Dunn.
two rounds of grants that we applied for, we were denied. Um, what you see on the agenda tonight is we are making motion authorize resubmitting uh, for grant. The original bid came in at what, almost eight hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars to to replace that. Right. So we were under the we were under the understanding that we may have better success this time. There's nothing guaranteed, but we're going to reapply. I mean, we're as concerned as you are. We see it moving. Yeah. Like with that, with them doing the Chartier Street and everything, I know the traffic's going to get back in the not through there. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's something we should look at. Restricting the uh, use of that road. Uh, I don't care. Because it's going to back up. I mean, it backs up now. Yeah, if people come through there or so. Okay. Yeah, I saw them do the drawing and I saw a couple of people looking at it over the summer. I just wanted to know how far along it was if anything was happening. Okay. Uh, it, it is shovel ready. Uh, the project's been uh, uh, thoroughly engineered, that's permitted from the railroad, okay. um, completed geotechnical engineering, right. invested yes. in that. Uh, there's a com complete plan. Uh, the problem was the original estimate for the project was about $350,000. Uh, we put it out to bid, and yeah. the, the market's really bad right now. And of course, the steel prices, the bids came back at the council was saying about $800,000. Uh, so last month, council rejected all the bids that we received authorized the engineer's advice rebidding it over the winter time uh, but taking advantage of this lag time between now and winter uh, the finance committee suggested hey the funding that could fund a potential project of this size is reopening let's give it one more shot so we completed a grant application to potentially fund this while we wait to rebid for better prices so we're just giving the grant another shot okay uh, hope for the best all right yeah thanks yep. thanks john uh, william price I'll, I'll be heard at uh, item. You want to wait for the agenda? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, we're casting. I was just registering that there was a representative here. Yeah, I want to wait. I'm sorry, you did? No, I was just registering that we were at a right there. Gotcha. Uh, Eric Newhouse. Uh, I'm as well here just to address the set. I gotcha. Okay. Well, let's move on to I had agenda items, so I was hoping to get added. Uh, the first one I'll, I'll pass out is the plug-in uh, on motion number 10. Uh, you can take one and pass it around. Uh, the bid opening for this project was after the uh, agendas were already put together, packets were put out. Uh, the lowest bid received to be right in is state pipe services in the amount of $95,710. So uh, coming down the table is the bid tab and the engineer's recommendation on that project. I had three additions to the agenda. I'm hoping uh, you would consider. If you could take one, Mayor, and pass it down. It's resolution 23. Uh, it's authorizing a grant application uh, to the COG for a community development block grant. Uh, we, we talked about this a while back, uh, replacing the uh, the uh, sidewalks within Triangle Park and making some ADA improvements within the park. So that authorizes that grant application to be formally submitted. So that's the first edition. Second edition that came in uh, on Friday was a pay application, a partial pay application number one to independent enterprises in the amount of $71,045.75. This is for the Storm Scepter project uh, that we discussed at last month's meeting. Uh, the work is pretty much majority of the way completed. Uh, so you'll see this invoice is for the vast majority of that project. So that's coming down the table. And then the last one kind of bridges on motion number seven but it makes a separate motion to authorizing the execution of a memorandum of understanding between the borough of Bridgeville, the township of South Fayette, and the property owner, which Eric is uh, here to represent, regarding memorializing the tax assessment for the new development over Newbury. Uh, it's been agreed that 20% of that land is within Bridgeville Borough, 20% of that land 
uh, real estate taxes will come back payable to Bridgeville Borough and 80%, including the building, will go to South Fayette. But without this, the borough wouldn't have received any tax revenue from that new development. So uh, I thank the solicitor for advancing that. So coming down the table is just bridging that, authorizing that memorandum of agreement. Uh, Members of random of understanding be executed. Any questions on on those three three items? Is it when we get to read them? <laughs> but uh, I apologize. If this all just came in last week. I will place those at the end of the agenda. Okay, uh, another business. I need a motion to approve September 13th, 2021 regular meeting minutes as submitted. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve. Okay. Yeah. I need a motion to approve the October 2021 bill list. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? The motion carries. Just waiting for the delay of the. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need a motion to approve the October 15th, 22nd, 29th, and November 5th, 2021 payrolls. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. I need a motion to adopt ordinance number 1023, an ordinance of the borough of Bridgeville, amending its code of ordinances, chapter 15, motor vehicles and traffic. Park 4, General Parking Regulations 15 402, parking prohibited at all times in certain locations, to prohibit parking at all times, and to establish a loading zone in a designated location on Station Street at or about Station Street Taylor Way intersection. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. We need a motion to adopt resolution number 2021-21, a resolution of the Borough of Bridgeville authorizing the submission of grant application to the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County for the Warner Street Slope Stabilization, Retaining Wall, and Stormwater Improvements Project. I'll move. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We need a motion to adopt resolution number 2021, a resolution of the Borough of Bridgeville authorizing the President of the Council the borough manager to execute the consent order and agreement with the Allegheny County Health Department. Note this is phase two consent order relative to the operation and maintenance of the sanitary sewer system. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion carries. All right, number seven. In a motion to approve the lot line revision of parcels 256-G-20 and 256-G-30 will set final approval, or approval and execution and release of the reported plan conditioned upon execution of a memorandum of understanding between the borough of Bridgeville, South Bay Township, and the applicant property owner stipulating as to the agreed upon or apportionment of land building values between the two municipalities for tax assessment purposes for a joint submission to the county assessor as recommended by the Bridgeville Planning Commission. Note the plan has been reviewed by the borough engineer and conforms to the Bridgeville Zoning Ordinance and Subdivision and, and Land Development Ordinance. Any comments before? Really, we're here just to answer any questions should you have them. Yeah. Do we have any uh, questions on the app? No, no we pretty much approved this years ago. Okay, take a motion. Seven. No second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Need a motion to authorize the disbursement of $13,140.70 to SM Industries for invoice number 1836 final for the municipal, uh, original municipal building roof replacement project. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The motion carries. I need a motion to authorize the payment of the 2021 minimum municipal obligations uh, to the Bridgeville Pension Plans. Number one, a non-uniform plan, $68,702. And number two, please, $113,159. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. 
I need a motion to accept the lowest responsible bid received in the award contract to State Pipe Services in the amount of $95,710 for the 2021 Sanitary Sewer O&M CCTV program. Tell I'll second. All in favor? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The motion carries. I need a motion to authorize LM&R Excavation LLC to compete complete repairs in the McLaughlin Run Park storm outfall at a cost not to exceed $14,500 with uh, the borough supplying all the materials. So moved. Second. So moved. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Need a motion to authorize Gateway Engineers to prepare plans, specifications, and advertise the FEMA hazard mitigation Baldwin and Margaret Street demolition project. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can we hear anything back from the table? Yeah, I have in my manager's report. Need a motion to authorize the sale via electronic auction and its advertisement of surplus police car number B1. I move. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to schedule and authorize the 2022 budget meeting. Tuesday, November 16th, 2021, at 6 p.m., the Auto Borough Building in Birchwood. I'll move. I second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Need a motion to accept the petition to rezone from Robert or Roberto Walsh regarding the request to rezone buildable parcel 255-E-280, located on Calvert Street, from conservation to residential one. An authorized referral to the Bridgeville Planning Commission in Allegheny County <coughs> Department of Economic Development. I have a question. I do. What was the reason that was moved to conservation? I can summarize this whole situation. Uh, this family has owned this parcel going back to the early 1980s. Uh, it was passed on from her parents to Roberta. Uh, back in the 1980s, it was still zoned R1, and it's up against uh, property that's owned by the borough. There's a Wabash plan of lots on the street it's called Wabash Park. It actually looks on a map like it's a park, but it's not. Uh, in all good conscience, it does make sense that that area is zoned conservation. Uh, once you get to the very tip of it on Calvert Street, where this lot and the majority one is, uh, it got just thrown into the conservation mix. Uh, back in the 80s, they did have plans to build here, and it never flourished. Well, she's had this parcel for sale for a couple years now. Uh, there is a buyer that's interested in buying this property to build a single family home here, uh, doing her due diligence to sell the property. She finds that it's zoned conservation and can't complete the sale. She comes out and says, hey, I'm confused. My, I knew that this property was zoned residential. When did it go to this? And I, I go back to zoning maps, go back to early 2000s when the, the change was. Uh, she's making a petition to us to reconsider rezoning her parcel that's Contingent, uh, contiguous to an R1 lot, so it isn't like an island. It, there, she orders an R1 lot and a paper street that's already R1. So we're just basically moving that line down two parcels. Uh, so everything on Calvert is R1, and then behind it, which is the woods, that's essentially the hillside between uh, Osceola and, and those streets and, and the lower parts of um, Patterson would still say conservation. So hopefully at the end, once we go through the process and it's all wrapped up by the December uh, meeting, uh, she can sell it and it can be a buildable lot. Ask you a quick question, I was looking through that thing. It looks like it's going to cost these people close to a couple thousand dollars. How it's resolved? Yes, yeah, she happen, has, she that has happen, happen that way or? Two things. Uh, there is a fee in our fee or, or a resolution for a petition to rezone, which is $300. She has paid that fee, so that, that's codified. Uh, it is in the resolution that uh, all billable reimbursables, such as advertising, the solicitor, and any engineering work to revise the map, uh, that they would have to pay. She has paid an escrow of $1,000. So whatever isn't used, we return to her, anything is over. As long as they have a no, she, so, Right now, it looks like it could be done for the $1,300. This is up where Butterball Bertha lives, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, yeah, for, uh, or, I need a motion. motion. Question? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I need a motion. I'll move. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. I need a motion to authorize the disbursements of the following real estate tax refunds as, of, uh, as a result of changes in assessments. Year 2021, parcel 255-S-142, the amount of $66.88 to Andrew Elfer. Year 2021, parcel 254-E-328, the amount of $67.52 to Michael Alina Gills. Uh, year 2021, parcel 254-N-18, the amount of $75.17 for Timothy and Julie Dunlap. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Any motion to accept and pay any commission due September 2021 real estate tax collector report? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We need a motion to acknowledge receipt of the August 2021 Treasury report. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No motion carries. We need a motion to accept the September 2021 police report. So moved. Approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll see what I can do. We need a, see, we need a res resolution, uh, number 2021-23, uh, authorizing the following application for CDB G funds for Allegheny County Economic Development for $23,200. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. All right. Uh, I need another motion for uh, Partial payment number one from Independent Enterprises Incorporated for the subject project, uh, storm sector improvements, partial payment number one in the amount of $71,045.75. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No motion carries. Uh, let's see here. We'll just read the whole first paragraph. It's essentially the same as item seven. It's seven. Just authorizing the execution of the memorandum of understanding for that uh, separation of taxes. So I need an informal motion. Right? Need a motion to uh, approve the memorandum of understanding for the memorandum of understanding. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, need a motion to uh, accept the memorandum of understanding uh, for item number seven. How's that? So um, second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Sorry to make you guys wait again. You just waited such a long time. <laughs> no problem. All right. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. Administration. You know, I don't really have anything, but I do want to remind everybody about the uh, community workshop meeting I mentioned last um, month. It's Tuesday, October 19th from 6 to 7.30 at the Fire Department's Chart Tears Room. In advance, they're planning an interactive map that the residents can look at, a special page on the website where you can submit your concerns and ideas. And Joe, did this recently go out in the, uh, this flyer? Uh, no, the flyer's posted around town. Okay. The chairwoman of the planning commission was able to help us out. She posted it okay. pretty much. Are they here in the office? They're at the front so, Yeah, it's nice. It has all the information. But I encourage everybody to attend. Good stuff. That's all I have. Yeah, looking forward to that. Actually. Yeah, me too. Uh, finance, Joe Producing. Okay, uh, quick, quick update. Uh, the Finance Committee uh, had a meeting uh, today for the initial discussions in regards to the budget. Uh, Joe did an excellent job getting all of the different numbers together and very easy to smooth uh, understanding with everything that we have going on. Uh, exciting uh, is, is uh, a good word to say. Uh, as uh, we had uh, uh, announced, we're having a, a meeting on what day was that, Joe? November. November 16th is the public meeting. Uh, we uh, 
for the 2021 budget to actual uh, ending the third quarter. Uh, we have 80%, 87% of the budget already with only expenditures of 71%. Uh, the sewer fund, uh, the revenue is at 71% with expenditures of only 59. So, so we're doing very well as far as the budget. Uh, health insurance renewals came in. Our rates are actually going down. I didn't know that that word went along with insurance renewals, but it's going down one and a half percent. Uh, and uh, we have some other discussions uh, as far as the finance committee talking about that budget that uh, we bring up uh, uh, during the public meeting. Uh, any questions? That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Parks and Rec. We got Joe from last one. Okay. Uh, the parks will be winterized first week in November, so there will be no adopting facilities in the parks. The uh, rentals for the, uh, the park season ends October 31st, so there will be needed permits at that time. Uh, that's pretty much it on the parks. I just put the thing on the clock, on the call call for the borough. I just want to let people know that uh, the call gave the borough a free day of use for the uh, sewer package. It's like $950, which Michelle and I are also bastards. And also, the COG has entered into a contract with PennDOT for the use of the vector machine when it's not being used on the municipalities, <coughs> which will help with the budget down there a bit too. That's all I have. Thanks, Joe. I think you're covering the. Get a quarter job. No, I, I didn't hear the date when you said What did you say the water was first was being it's up to the water company or our guys. It's usually the first, second week in November. We got the paint for free, so that's it. Thank you. Uh, you're covering public works for me, don't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> as far as public works goes, uh, okay, they finished all the uh, wall repairs they put in those Jersey berries on Baldwin Street down there to help prevent the water from reaching the on the Ball Street. The road paved and proved. They paved Spruce Street and portion of Oak Alley, which serves the borough a lot of money in our guys do the uh, pavement on some of these smaller streets. Curbside leaf collection starts on October 11th and runs through December 10th. The brush grinder collection program will be starting on November 1st. Street sweeping has ended on September 20th. Continue sweeping like the business districts, but it won't be back till the spring as far as street sweeping. So that's it for public works. Thank you. Uh, public safety, Bruce. I don't have any. Any report? All right, pleasure. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Mayor Betty Cope. On October 8th, I was asked to attend a service at the Solid Rock Revival Center Church on Dewey Avenue, where Pastor Crawford and his wife, Susan, was celebrating 25 years in ministry. And this man has had an amazing life. He was actually imprisoned in Saudi Arabia for his Christian beliefs and starting churches. And in his country, India, his family was attacked but now, through the grace of God, they do have six, six churches there. They came to the States in 2006, were in various communities, and then they finally moved here, bought the church on Dewey Avenue, and they're very thankful to be here. On October 14th, we had the opportunity to meet with Senator Devlin Robinson at the Schoolhouse Arts Center on South Park Road. 9.30 a.m. to discuss current issues and ask questions and on October 15th he will be at the Western Allegheny Community Library on Bateman Road in Oakdale. Uh, also this is Cancer Awareness Month so we are praying for those who have lost loved ones to cancer and we're grateful for those that are still survivors and through the generosity of Just King, our police vehicles will be bearing this on their cars. We're thankful to her 
for that. On our chief of police received a letter from a family and I'd like to read it to you. It says, Dear Bridgeville Police, words can't even begin to describe how thankful we are and how you responded to our son, Lewis, on 8-25-21. Having our baby stop breathing is something we would never wish for any parent to go through. Your guys are so gentle and caring and went above and beyond. We're so happy that he is now healthy and happy. He had a mild seizure and is quickly returning to himself. Many thanks to Sissiano family. And the baby turned one year old on 9-30-21. The responding officers were Sergeant Young and Patrolman Lower. And much to my surprise this evening, here is a beautiful bouquet of flowers. It says, congratulations on being named Pennsylvania's Mayor of the Year, Johanna Venata and the School Board of Chartier's Valley School District. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. We are still declaring um, trick or treat for October 31st and Sunday by 6 to 8 in Bridgeville. And we hope that you will be attending all of the other events, particularly the one the rail yard has on October 28th. We're still looking for people to come with your cars and deliver candy out of your trunks. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Chief, extend our gratitude here. That's what brings and with that, your report. Thank you, Council President. Um, made one minor change on the monthly report that was submitted every month. Now, what's important to know, there's only about a dozen issues that are covered on this report, and they're probably the most prevalent things that we deal with uh, amongst many, many dozens of other issues. Uh, but I removed the motorist assist line item because that only covers if we assist motors who's broken down in these directions. That only something that happens maybe a couple of times a month. And what I did, I replaced it with, with business checks. And you can see we had 203 of them in the month of September. And what, what business checks are, this is something we started last November, partially due to COVID because things had slowed down quite a bit and we were looking to limit our contact with people. So what, what the business checks are, officers on midnight shifts when they walk the beat, uh, or do parking walks, they'll get out and check the local businesses, pull the doors, check the windows, make sure they're secure. During the day or during the afternoon shift, this is when we stop by the local businesses and we talk to the business owners or patrons. We go in and make sure that, that everything's going well with the businesses. So I just wanted to show that you know, we've taken a proactive effort to uh, make a point to check the businesses and uh, make an effort to go inside during business hours uh, you know, as part of uh, community service, community relations. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just to add one more thing, uh, there is a lot of check fraud going on in the, not just Bridgeville, but just in the South Hills area, um, especially uh, trying to get over on elderly people. Uh, I am seeing it here uh, with our bank as well as talking to other bankers. There's a lot of that going on. So if it sounds too good to be true, check with two people and then maybe double it. So maybe even two or four people to get people's opinions and just, they're very slick right now. And it's amazing. I have heard of uh, one that was uh, uh, very, very out in the open that, that uh, the news was reporting and it sounded really legit. And I can see a lot of people being fooled by it. And if it wasn't for a banker questioning this person going into the bank, uh, could have lost a lot of money. So please just get it out there to people to, to, to make sure and double check them when you're having something that's out of the box to do. Sorry, I just that's the more we say it, the more people are going to be watching more uh, aware of it. Thanks. That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Solicitor Tom McNerney. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, accommodating my virtual uh, presence this evening. Um, and it is my rate report. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. 
Okay, thanks. I do want to thank um, South Bay at Newberry for, um, for cooperation with us and also give credit where credit is due as well back to uh, Joe Power for actually helping um, bring that matter to a fruition um, with the MOU in conjunction with that subdivision development plan. Um, just to note, there's one other potential future parcel that um, Joe and I will follow and try to bring to a similar um, conclusion as well on that. Any questions for Tom? Okay, thanks Tom. You're welcome. Uh, engineer. I, I just want to make a note, Mr. Verducci, I, 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 have, I, I, I will call it update you on tomorrow as well. Thank you. Okay, Royal Engineer Kevin Brown. Uh, we did submit a report dated October 7th, and we have no additional data. Any questions for the engineer? Okay, thanks, Kevin. Our Chief Ray Custain. Thank you, Council President. Uh, <clears throat> the month of September, uh, the fire department responded to 50 calls for service. Um, just a reminder, the upcoming Halloween frame is on October 30th. It will begin at 11 a.m. Uh, and we did receive word last week that we, we will be receiving, we the fire department will be receiving a grant uh, through COVID money from Allegheny County again, uh, which we will be using to upgrade all of our flood mitigation equipment, such as like, trash pumps, hoses, and things like that. Um, one last reminder, uh, site full cash tickets, it's our uh, Christmas time fundraiser. Uh, tickets are being printed as we speak and will be out for sale probably this time next week. That is all. Thank you. Hey, Chief. South Virginia has Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the report has been submitted to the board. And uh, other than that, we just want to remind the public our fall uh, donation drive will be hitting your mailboxes soon. Uh, we're going for a capital improvement on our cardiac monitors. So, with each one of them costing $40,000, I've got four of them to replace. Uh, so, all this help would be appreciated. So, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone from the Historical Society? Mary, Mary Weiss. That's a question for Mr. Miller. Are you still taking donations for your October 14th event at Top Golf? Yes. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Virtual Library representative. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to report that September was Love Your Library Month. Um, we had a fantastic month, a lot of different fundraisers going on. Um, thanks to the community and to all of you who participated, attended, and contributed. We raised almost $8,000 that's eligible for the prorated match from the Jack Fletcher Foundation. So thank you again for all the support. Um, and I just wanted to share, we have a couple of openings, anticipated openings on our library board of trustees. So if you know anyone who's interested, feel free to send them our direction or let me know their information and I can reach out. Um, and we'll have one part-time position as well for community services clerks, so same thing. If you know any great candidates, feel free to send them to the library. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> any questions for the library? Uh, Bridge of Parking Authority. Mike David? Any questions for Mike? Thank you. Um, Planning Commission Representative. Mike, do you have anything? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, just two quick things that we went over. One was the um, what you discussed tonight with Newberry with the lot. Um, uh, Eric and his engineer had presented uh, to us. Um, we made the recommendation, and then the other big one was um, for the comprehensive plan. We made a recommendation for uh, which firm we want to send to have you guys uh, vote on, hopefully. Um, so I don't know if there's any news on the grant yet. I know it's just to be like the last week of this year. So. You said then, now it's about the end of the month. All right, so <laughs> so. So we're just looking forward to that. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It was a Extensive effort for several months from the commission. And it wasn't, it, well, it wasn't, you know, we'll add, it wasn't planning commission, it was planning commission plus times. It was a, definitely a plan. Yeah, a lot, a lot of work, a lot, of, a lot to look forward to. Yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, Borough Manager Joe Cow. Uh, a couple of quick updates regarding the FEMA hazard mitigation grant. This is the Baldwin and Margaret Street demolition projects. Uh, we received back the fully executed grant contract from the state. Uh, 
So the FEMA representatives handling our project, recommend we get the project bids, the specifications, and everything already to bid that's on the agenda tonight. Uh, just to be cognizant of that, once we acquire the properties, we have 90 days that they need to be demolished and basically a grassy plot. So once we get moving, this is going to move very fast. Uh, with the signed contract in hand, we submitted our first request uh, to the state for our first drawdown for a million dollars. We're waiting for that money to come in. Once the money's in the bank, we can start scheduling closings. Uh, they did give us approval that if any tenants that are in, in the identified properties now move out now, they are eligible for relocation assistance. So uh, the goal is that hopefully within the next week we can get an update letter out to the, the properties that are in the project saying, hey, this is our planned acquisition of your property. Anyone that leaves now that's a tenant is eligible for acquisition costs. And then the engineer uh, from Gateway, that we didn't change engineers on this project because it's just it was just too far involved. So that's why you see the old engineer in this. Uh, they're moving forward with the DEP permits right now. So hopefully we can have everything lined up that come the end of this year, early next year, this is all gonna move very fast. Uh, we got back the appraisal report on the Italian club has been presented to their membership and hopefully we can have a determination back from them within the month if they're officially in or out. And then that will kind of close that chapter. So that's where we are with the, the FEMA project. So it's actually moving ahead pretty fast now. Uh, a couple other grant projects. Uh, partnering with the police chief, we received a thousand dollar grant from the Attorney General's office to buy a same other drug handouts that will complement Halloween treat bags for the Halloween parade. And then grant applications that were prepared and be submitted tomorrow after your approval tonight was the Warner Street uh, project. Uh, I'm hoping that we can lean heavy on our state. Uh, elected officials, so if you can help me with that, I would appreciate that, and I'll give you a copy of that tomorrow. And then uh, that grant seeks $500,000 of the $781,000 project. Uh, the most you can ask for is $500,000. I think that's really, uh, it's a lot, but uh, it is doable once you look at the scale of the project in relationship to the business district and the railroad. And I think that's what makes this project so unique, is that if, if it isn't really invested in properly, it could have an impact on the region's economy because it potentially encompasses uh, and dangers the adjacent rail line, and it's also our main access to our business district parking lot. So that's how we're trying to craft the story of its importance that really sets the stage for where we're at. Uh, regarding another grant application was submitted was for recycling equipment, uh, improvements for next year, replace the leaf vacuum, a public works vehicle, and potentially a new recycling bins for all accounts in the market. So that application has been submitted and we met with the DEP on that to see its validity uh, and uh, they had interest in the project. And we crafted a, a project around recommendations from the DEP. So hopefully we'll know next year uh, if this is awarded and it will replace a truck that's, uh, that needs it. And our leaf back, uh, it will probably get us through the season, but in all reality, uh, this may be the last season we can get out of it. It has a lot of plate electrical issues being flooded a couple of times. So uh, that's the reason why we're go for a leaf back. You can see it, like, that machine looks fairly decent while you replacing it. I, I want you to understand what the issue was. Do you have any questions? I'm going to Senator uh, Robinson's event on Thursday if you want me to take it back. I'll be busy handling it. Cool. Thanks, uh, thanks Joe. In, in addition to that, I, I know he is, Joe has uh, re-energized the discussion with PennDOT in reference to the North End town and possible uh, improvements on that end as well. We have a, a proposal that had been completed some time ago that we have submitted to them again, and we are going to communicate, hopefully, get more I can speak to that. Go ahead. Uh, uh, middle of last month, there was a meeting with PennDOT as they're studying the proposed tolling of I-79 and the bridge river change. Uh, a sign that we are adamantly against it, so please let that be the temperature of the room. But uh, ancillary to that, should this project move forward, PennDOT studying what would be the impact on diversion routes. And really, there's two diversion routes if you want to get away from that interchange, and it's essentially Presto Saigon Road or Route 50 in Bridgeville. Uh, knowing that, hey, we have plans sitting on the shelf, do you really know what these plans are? And Back in 2018, the borough commissioned traffic engineers to do the traffic study plans for the south end, and eventually that led to the Chartier Street and the, the bridge project there. So, you know, that, that came to light. So, this planning takes time, but if you, you keep to it, it, it pays dividends. 
our whole work here came out of that planning. And the last thing that really hasn't gone anywhere because it's, it's, it's a big pill to swallow is the north end. And it encompasses some real estate that needs to be acquired for right of ways to make doubling the, the, the lanes from two to four. So essentially, not reinventing the wheel, we had conversations with the Pendleton District Executive and the SPC on the importance of, hey, if you're considering tolling and the impact on diversion routes, now is the time to invest in the north end of Bridgeville. So we're, we're, we're pitching that. Kind of at the same time, we're against the tolling, but if this is going to go ahead, we, we need a, a, an ally in this fight and the, that, that conversation. And then a letter was sent to them that you were CC'd in, this, in your bill process. Well, that in conjunction with the active transportation and the comprehensive plan, uh, there's, there's some potential. There's some potential. See that, that part of town change. So. It doesn't hurt to ask. No. It's not a promise, but we, we got to start opening doors and uh, right. this is a good time. Great. Is it worth having those conversations again with Collier and trying to put that uh, task force together again? Or is that too early? I don't believe it's uh, too early. I, I, if you look at the plan, without investing in new traffic engineering and starting this all over again, you know, they have traffic engineers. Let them do this. But we started this, okay? And you'll see it is a multi-municipal project. That plan does show uh, widening over in front of the Chartres Valley Shopping <laughs> Center. So it is a multi-municipal project that uh, we really should be starting that conversation. Uh -huh. I'll actually see Kyle on Friday, so I'll mention that to him. Maybe if you could share with him a copy of what we proposed uh, to Penn Dot, it was in your box, uh, it would maybe be nice that they would do a similar request. Because the source <coughs> of this problem is not a bridgeful traffic thing. Right. That shopping center it is a major source. Any other comments? Okay, anything under new business? Uh, just a reminder, the Chili Cook-Off is this Sunday uh, from 12 to 4 at Fairview Park. Uh, we have 24 chilies. Uh, entrance fee is $10. There's all kinds of things that uh, uh, they are out there for kids as well as the adults. So it's going to be a great time. Anything else under business? Okay, we'll move on Oh, thank you. Um, there is a, a, a spaghetti dinner benefit for Brandon James, who's the son of one of our police officers here in town, uh, who's going through some difficult uh, uh, medical issues. And uh, that is to be held on Sunday, October 24th, um, from 12 noon to 6 p.m. Adults are $12, children 4 to 10 are $8. So will be some Chinese options, some silent options, things like that. So uh, if you have some time to uh, contribute to a, a worthy cause, I'd appreciate you all spread the word to, uh, to help Sergeant James and his son. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'll take that motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Team adjourned. Thank you.